Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Listen, there is no room on this crazy, busy show for me, other than this quick audio intro, so that's why I'm not appearing on camera. I know, I know, you'll have to do without. I'm sure you'll be much better off for it. So, you may notice off to the right here, my beautiful Electra tape recorder. It's not in use. I was planning on using it for the intro today. Unfortunately, it requires two C's and a 9-volt, and I don't have a 9-volt because I think I had to steal it to put it in a fire alarm that was going off. So it's just making a, an honorable appearance, as it were. So this is an omnibus show, a variety pack, however you want to call it. We've got some awesome, awesome stuff that I've sort of put together into one mega show. So what we've got coming up is a product review, an unboxing review. We've got some records to review, and we've even got something else planned for you, but you're going to have to stay tuned. It's going to be a little bit of a surprise. I think you're going to have fun with that. It's something you've been asking for, a comparison. Actually, you know what? Screw it. You already know what I'm talking about because it's probably in the thumbnail. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us. And to those of you that joined us for our Members Only Vinyl Nation program just the other day on Friday, welcome aboard to the new members of the Vinyl Nation. And to everybody else, so glad you're here. We're going to have fun. You're not going to want to miss this. Welcome to Wreckitology. Okay, so this segment is by request. If you remember, a couple of weeks ago, we reviewed the Angel's Horn turntable. Which one was it? The H001, I think. I'm not sure which model. It was the higher end models, like 230-ish dollars. And it looked great, as you can see, but the motor popped. It seemed to blow out. So they sent a replacement right away, which is this unit down here. This is the new one. That's the old one. And my keen viewers of the show noticed that there appeared to be some platter wobble on the new unit. So the question was, is the spindle bent? Is the platter warped? What's going on? So my plan was to do this shot, to do this segment, and you know put the old platter on the new one, just kind of compare it. So that's what we're gonna do. The only problem is, as I was getting ready for this shot, I decided to spin it up, make sure everything was connected, the belt was on, and just for the heck of it, I thought I would try to the old one as well, knowing it wouldn't work, and then it started spinning, which brings a lot of questions into my mind, considering we heard an audible pop, and I checked the thing for probably about an hour off camera. I unplugged it, replugged it, gave it time to relax, couple hours here, plugged it back in, did everything I could think of, checked everything from the platter to the belt, to the actual spindle and there was no movement on that spindle whatsoever. It's been in a box for a couple of weeks, pulled it out for today's show and I can't explain it because something did pop. And usually when things pop, they don't unpop. So now I've got two functioning ones. The second one continues to you know work flawlessly. I think it's a, it's a great turntable. Although, you know, in reviewing a lot of the comments, one thing that I will acquiesce to is the fact that this is you know, it's a, it's a high asking price for this turntable. It is a lot of money being asked for this turntable. Whether or not that's a good value, that's a judgment you're going to have to make. But enough of that. We're here to talk about platter wobble. So now that we've got two functioning turntables, let's check it out in detail. Okay, guys, so I was really not expecting to have two working turntables here, but we can still test out the platter wobble. So the new one is the one on the right. The old one is the one on the left. And I, first thing I noticed that the platter sits up a little higher on the one on the right, although that is accentuated by that shadow because the light is coming to it at an angle. It's not quite as much as it looks there. But still, uh, I would say both have a little bit of wo wobble. I don't think that the original one is that much different. So, yeah, a little bit of wobble. Again, that's not going to, on this type of a turntable, you guys, it's just not going to cause a problem. I mean, it's. I would say the wobble is worse on the left, the original one, the old one. Very, very interesting. I don't think that, not sure if it's a spindle warped or if it's a warped platter, but let's go ahead and reverse the platters and just see what happens. Okay, so now we have reversed the platters. So again, the new turntable is on the right, the old one is on the left, and 
The platter on the right is from the left turntable and the platter on the left is from the right turntable. We reversed them. We f swapped them out. That's what's going on here. Those felt slit mats kind of add to the effect. So let's take those off next. You can see they both have some significant wobble. In this angle, the one on the right, the new one with the old platter looks worse. Anyway, interesting stuff. There's a site you don't often come across. Kind of a bizarre situation, but interesting anyway. Oh, the one on the right stopped. That's a very interesting development. Let's see what happened here. Did the belt come off? It did not. This is really weird, you guys. So now the unit on the right <laughs> is having issues. Let me start it again. And now it's working. That was weird. Now it could be that the tone arm is so close to the trigger edge there that it just, you know, scooted out of the way enough to turn it off. I really don't know. And then this guy on the left also is not spinning at the moment. Huh. I'm going to let these spin for a while and see if I can make that happen again. That was weird. Okay, it hasn't happened again. I've had it going for a few minutes, but I was double checking the position of those tone arms and they were well within range to keep these spinning. So that sketches me out a little bit because again, the turntable on the right is the new turntable. Very, very, very bizarre. Okay, it's been about five minutes and the one on the right just totally stopped again for no reason whatsoever. So I'm gonna take the platter off. I'm gonna turn it on and I'm gonna see, yep, and now that spindle is moving again. Very, very, look, the one on the left stopped. What is going on? Do you think, it, and they obviously do it apparently at about the same time. I wonder if it's some sort of timer or something. This is really bizarre. So let me start this one again. Okay. All right, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna flip them both off and then I'm gonna restart them at exactly the same time. In three, two, one. And obviously there's no belt but I can confirm both of these motor drive shafts are operating and I'll come back here and let you know at what point they cut out. Okay, so it's been exactly three minutes and both of them switched off at the same time. So that tells me that it's some sort of automatic mechanism. Now I'm very, very curious if it has to do with sensing music. So we're gonna go ahead and put a record on as though we're playing a record and see if it does the same thing. If it's an auto off, like if it hit the run out groove and it's smart enough to know there's no music coming out and then it shuts itself off, that's actually, that's a feature. <laughs> I work in IT. Problems are often defined as features, undocumented. However, if it's actually just shutting off, which I, I'm starting to think it's, it's more of a feature than an issue, but let's put a record on and test that out. Okay, so now we're gonna test the three minute thing with an actual record to see if it's sensing music and shutting off at three minutes. Hey Google, set a timer for three minutes. Three minutes, starting now. Okay, so if this thing is actually sensing audio, and it doesn't matter we're not connected to speakers, but if it's sensing that there's actual audio and shutting off in the absence of that audio, that's actually pretty impressive. The reason why you would want that is if it hits the runout groove and there's no sound for three minutes, it'll shut itself off so it's not just carving a hole into your record. If it's shutting off after three minutes because there's a problem, then that's something separate. So let's let the timer run up to three minutes and see what happens. Okay, we've got about 25 seconds to go. In the meantime, I want to show you this. The only mention of something that could be that is this. The unit automatically switched in standby mode power off and on again from the back side. There's no power on and off from the back other than the power cord. So I'm not sure. Okay, about 10 seconds to go and this thing, if it's a problem, is going to stop. If it keeps playing, we're gonna call it a feature, <laughs> which I'm all for. Okay, there's the timer. Hey Google, power off. All right, it's still playing. So it's got an undocumented feature, which is fine. I think that's, that's good, good for them. 
I'm glad to know that the thing isn't just, you know, faulting out after three minutes because that was very, very strange. It's very, very strange. Okay, enough of these guys. Let's review some records. These are my latest three records. I picked them up all in the last week. And I want to tell you why I picked each one up. And we'll take a little bit of a look. Let's start with this one right here. So Kay Starr, she was pretty big in the 1950s. Kind of a forgotten name a little bit now in the mainstream. But she got her start back in the late 30s singing with Glenn Miller. She was pinch hitting for Marion Hutton, who was out on maternity leave. So for two weeks, Kay Starr was the girl singer with the Glenn Miller Orchestra. She went on to much success in her own right. She had a couple of big hits, The Wheel of Fortune and The Rock and Roll Waltz. And what's interesting about Kay Starr is she was really loved by Patsy Cline. And that's actually how I discovered Patsy Cline. Now I knew of Patsy Cline, obviously, but I decided to give it a listen because I was a K-Star fan first after learning about her from her association with Glenn Miller. And then from her, I went on to discover Patsy Cline's music and the rest is history. But K-Star is a belter. She had a very distinctive voice. Let's look at the flip side here. She's featured on a lot of bizarre record labels. This is Rondo, which is a Kimberly Records sub-label. You can find her on a, a bunch of sort of offshoot labels as her career sort of wound down in the late 50s and 60s. But in her heyday, she was on Capitol. She was very, very prolific and, you know, was singing all the way up until when she passed away in 2016. There is the record itself. It's got a couple minor dings. I picked this up actually last night and the next one, the next record as well last night, about $3 from Goodwill. Goodwill is charging three bucks for used records now, which at some locations, which is ridiculous. All right, let's take a look at the next record. This one also has a bit of a Patsy Cline tie and Eddie Arnold was a friend and colleague of Patsy Cline. Now, if you aren't really into country Western music, especially older vintage Western music, which I really like, then I would encourage you to at least give Eddie Arnold a, a chance. And I want you to look up Eddie Arnold, Cattle Call. As you can tell, that's the name of this album, and that song is on here. Give that song a listen. It's one of those songs you're like, oh, yeah, I knew this song. I just didn't know the name of it. It is an amazing, amazing, amazing song, especially with a pair of headphones on. I love this stuff. The artwork alone is worth the price of admission. This is another $3 Goodwill record. This is a Dyna Groove Country Music Hall of Fame series. Really, really cool stuff. This is RCA uh, Studio B stuff from Nashville, most likely. So it was produced by Chet Atkins, who was vice president of RCA Studio B. And, you know, almost every artist, you know, Jerry Reed, Eddie Arnold. So if you weren't on DECA records, you were probably being produced by Chet Atkins. And if you were on DECA, you are most certainly being produced by Owen Bradley. So this is a really, really cool record. It is filthy. It's disgusting. I don't even know what that is down there. It's very disturbing. It needs a good clean. I mean, these are these are thrift store records. They're not, you know, super high-end records. It's three dollars is the max you would want to pay. But this is a great, great album. You know, if you don't find the record, definitely give it a listen online. All right, one more record, and it happens to be the one I paid the most for. All right, you guys. A little bit of a teaser the other day when we were listening to the Munsters TV themes because I'm really into vintage TV themes. And so I was kind of hinting at more of that music on the channel. One of my absolute favorites is the Jetsons. And this is an awesome record. I paid $12 for this record. This was at that Joe's Treasure Trove record shop, which I hope to be doing more content about and from in the future. Stay tuned for that. We'll see how it develops. But this is a record I couldn't pass up. This doesn't date back to the 60s, you know, when the show was out. Unfortunately, this is 77. It's a CBS special products. And, you know, sometimes when stuff is done in the 70s, it has, it has 70s stuff has such a look that is unmistakable. I mean, the font on First Family on the Moon there is very 70s, but overall, everything else looks pretty, you know, could still be 60s, which is what I would prefer. I love that era. This is a very 70s back panel with this like, you know, sort of showbiz pizza palace, you know, light surrounding the border kind of thing here. It's a simulated stereo. It's a CBS special products in partnership with Columbia. 
And yeah, I'm looking forward to giving this a listen. I love Jets and stuff. So I think we've got some songs and some stories. So you can see it says song and story. So this is something I'm looking forward to presenting on this channel. There's the record itself. It is in good condition as you would expect for $12, unlike the $3 records that are all nasty. This came in a new paper sleeve and it comes in a nice outer sleeve as well, but I, I took that off because it's so reflective. So there you go, guys. Those are my latest three records. Tell me what your latest three records or latest record is in the comments down below. Not only are we gonna find out what's in this box, check it out, but we're gonna look at a lot of like items and rank them and talk about them and see what your thoughts are and kind of give you some of my insight in this regard. So it's probably not a record player, probably not a boom box, at least not a very big one. So what on earth is it? It's something that I didn't have any of two years ago and now I have more than I need. Okay. Okay, so kind of something there. Got some colors. Oh yes. This is the Redicus PR11. Now, what is special about this? There are two flavors of this very small radio. I mean, you know, palm sized. There's a red one and there's a gold one. I thought I ordered the red one. <laughs> Full disclosure here, but this one is cool too. Red and, oh, this is the red one. So apparently they share the same packaging. And, you know, what is this thing? So it's, it's got all kinds of features, MP3 player, radio. It has SD card. This is something I thought would be really cool. I've told you guys before that I listen to, you know, movie audio at night, and I thought this might be good for that. So I thought we would give it a try. Here are some of the features. MP3 via the TF card or a USB disc. I'm not sure if that means it actually has like a USB equipped on it. It has an LED flashlight, which could be kind of helpful, you know, if you're getting up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom or something. It's got a rechargeable lithium ion battery, but I believe that that's accessible. So, you know, rechargeable batteries are all good and fun until they eventually wear out. So hopefully this one, as far as I know, will allow you to replace it when that moment comes. Okay, so we've got a USB to TRS or eighth inch. No, we don't. What do we have? What the heck is this thing? This is interesting. So on one side USB, the other side the audio cable and another USB. So it gives you a couple of options of connecting like an aux input. That's very interesting. Very, very interesting. We've got a wrist strap. Oh, it's attached. It is a red one. Yes, I'm glad. I think the red one looks better. Oh, look at that thing. That is cool. Yes, that looks awesome. And that's good news that we can replace the battery. It's that same type of Nokia battery pack that we've seen a lot of. I guess I'll leave that open until we put that in there. A lot of things run on that, even like portable gaming systems, QC pass. You know what, you guys? Redicus has proven to be a fantastic, fantastic organization. And everything we reviewed from theirs has been pretty much stellar. Cool. All right, so let's see here. Here's our battery. Like I said, it's just basic Nokia type of battery, lithium ion, 3.7 volt, 800 milliamps. Go ahead and insult, insert this. Don't insult it, just insert it. Just like that. It's got good heft to it. I love that finish. Oh, that's cool. It's got a built-in speaker, transport controls. It's got a cool kind of retro red LED display, which is another reason why I thought it was cool. Here's the manual. Let's take a tour around the outside. So we've got our on and off switch and volume. Nothing on that side. There's our SD card slot or TF card slot. So yeah, I've got a big old USB jack in there. And what are these? So the power, there's the LED, oh, it's a flashlight, okay. The USB and obviously the headphone. Then on top, we already looked at that. So let's go ahead and power it on. Okay, so that flashing that you see is not actually there. <laughs> the, that's not evident to the naked eye. And um, we can switch modes here. AM, aux in, and FM. Apparently USB is only active when you actually select it. So, okay, cool. So as of the filming of this, it is several days before show date. 
So we're still in the middle of the week here, and I'm going to use this time before the weekend, before the show goes up, to really test it out for a few nights, for a few days. See what I think of it. So not only will we give it a full test, but I'll be able to give you my thoughts on it. And then we'll look at the entire line of Redicus radios we reviewed as well. So stay tuned. I've had this now for about two or three nights, and I like it. I think it's a good little radio. Let me show you some of my thoughts. I feel like the build quality is really good as I've experienced with uh, Redicus in general. Ooh, the display looks a lot better with this light, so good. Um, I love the spinning disc with different colors there. I love the red LED light. Again, you see a little flicker still there. It's you know completely smooth and non-flickery to the naked eye. That's just a shutter effect on the camera. Uh, you know, again, I use these primarily the ones that have the SD cards to listen to you know movie audio, which this is. This is, I think this is White Christmas. So I, I love doing that. I think that's a really cool way to, uh, to listen to movies at night. It helps me fall asleep. It's got this LED on the side, which that LED functions as like a warning light too. I think like a low battery alert. You can literally put MP3s on a thumb drive in there. You can do a line input with that funky cable. It's got cool features. It's got really, really cool features. I love the analog volume knob versus a clicky digital knob. Those I think are annoying, but this is a, a great little radio. My only two gripes are number one, that it doesn't show you the name of the track you're listening to because these are MP3 files. So I would like for it, like some of the other ones do, we'll look at that in a minute here, for it to show you, you know, the name of that track. So when you're skipping, all you get is the track number, 18, 19, 20. I've got like 65 different things on here, including ambient tracks. Uh, again, only had it for a couple of days. The battery's been fully charged, still out of the box. Just a fantastic, fantastic little thing. One nice touch I think is really slick is this little key thing fits in here on the back and then it works as a kickstand. I think that's really, really slick. So highly recommended. I don't know if I said it already, but the display doesn't turn off. That's kind of an, I wish it would turn off after a period of time, but it's much easier on the eyes than a full bright display like they have on some of their other units. So this one is really good uh, to have at night. So this fully highly recommended. Again, I don't think we've run across a bad Redicus product yet. So far, we like everything that Redicus has done. They've done a lot of cool stuff. And on that note, I want to kind of recap the other Redicus units that we've reviewed here. Um, I've got a bunch of them. So let's kind of fly through and I'll give you my high level thoughts. This is a uh, TR107. This is a AA powered, very basic AM FM stereo radio. And it works great. Absolutely fan great for you know having in your pocket. All of these, I believe, are going to feature digital audio or digital tuning. This one does have an analog volume knob, which is nice. Again, it does run. You have to put in your own batteries. Those are triple A's, actually. So great little radio. I love that one. This is a radio and cassette player. We've reviewed all of these, by the way. If you want to go back and watch a full review, uh, you are welcome to do so. This one is a Walkman unit. I'm trying to remember if this one had the stereo heads. This one only has mono heads, but it's still a good little unit. I like it. I think it's fine. It's got a built-in speaker, an antenna. It's battery operated. You get all the basic controls you would want on a unit like this. And again, it's solid. It doesn't feel cheap and flimsy. It's got AM, FM radio on there. Very cool. It's also a recorder, which is nice. You can actually record on that. Okay, kind of keeping in that same vein here. This is another model. This one also has mono heads. This is an automatic auto reverse unit. So you can literally have it loop back on itself. I like this unit as well. It's not quite as solid feeling to me as the other one. You can run it off of DC power as well. It's a good unit. There's nothing wrong with it. I mean, it, it is what it is. Some people freak out over the stereo head versus mono head thing. For me, again, listening to movie audio, it's just not that, you know, I'm not, my expectations aren't that it's going to be a hi-fi stereo unit. This is just a functional cassette player with a built-in speaker. It's really, really nice. Perfect for like a camping trip 
or travel or something. I think those are really, really cool. All right, next we're gonna look at this guy right here. This is the V111. This is FM stereo with short wave, medium wave, which is AM, as well as DSP. So it's a pretty you know, well-functioned radio. Again, I don't wanna go into a full review on every one of these. I just kinda of wanna talk through it. It does take batteries. You can tell that I haven't been using this a lot because it doesn't have batteries in it. I try not to leave batteries in units that I don't use on a daily basis. It does have a little kickstand back here, which is kinda of nice. Yeah, it's a great little unit. It's really hard, I've noticed, to pick up shortwave lately. It's really, really hard. I used to be really into shortwave radio back in the late 90s. And it just seemed like, I mean, there's a lot more content on the airwaves back then. Uh, but, you know, it's kind of a bummer that there's not as much. Today, internet radio, you can, you know, pick up so much more. But it's still fun to see what you can grab out of the air. Display. <laughs> it's kind of funny. So there's that. I think it's a fine unit. Kind of the big brother to that unit, I would say, is this one. This is the B, the V115. And this is a little dirty and scratched up because this is my daily driver. Until I got this red one, which comes in gold as well. Uh, this is the one I've been using every single night. And I think it is a great unit. It has got a built-in chargeable battery instead of the double A's. I prefer rechargeable batteries, especially ones like this where it's just that little Nokia battery and you can you know find those anywhere. So when the battery, you know, when the battery wears out, you can replace that. It's got a passive uh, mega bass reflex back there. So the sound is actually very full. I've got the backlight timer on a pretty short timer, but this thing is nuclear. I think you can adjust the brightness, but even on the lowest setting, it is nuclear at night. So you have to still kind of memorize where the controls are. This records a line input, which I use this to do a lot of the line input record tests for the record players, the direct feed tests. It is limited to MP3, I think at 128, but for YouTube videos, it's you know, you're not gonna get that much better anyway. So it's multifunction for that. SD card you can put in there and it works fantastic. I have no complaints about this whatsoever. The battery life lasts based on you know me listening to it for maybe hour, hour and a half a night, will last three, four weeks on a single charge. So this is an absolutely fantastic unit and uh, a similar form factor to the V111, but a completely different product because it does it does a lot. This one doesn't have SD card or anything. It's literally just a radio. So, yeah. Okay, moving on. We're not done yet. Before I got the V115, I was using this for sort of my nighttime MP3 player. This is the PR12 telescoping and anytime you see a unit with a speaker it's going to have a telescoping antenna and that goes for the walkman type devices as well the reasoning for that is because in a regular walkman with no speaker it uses the headphone jack but if you have a speaker it will have uh, extendable telescoping antenna so is the case here because it's got a little speaker this guy is rechargeable unfortunately you can't access that battery so once it's toast it's toast. I mean, if you knew what you were doing, you could get in there, I suppose. But this is great. It's a great little unit. And, you know, it's got the AM, FM radio. I think this might even be shortwave. No, it's just AM, FM. But it's got the MP3 capability. So you put a TF card, headphone jack up there. You go to town. It does have a, it does have a digital volume, which is not my preference. And my one gripe on this unit was that the volume doesn't go very quiet. So at the very quietest setting, it was still a hair louder than I cared for it to be at night. Obviously, when you're listening on sleep headphones at night, you don't want something blasting you. So it was a bit too loud for me, but it was doable. It was definitely doable. It's a good little unit and very small, very pocket-sized and a great little, great little device. Okay, we got a couple of more here. This one we reviewed recently. This is so cool. I mean... If you're a child of the 80s and 90s, not even talking about prison tech, okay? We're not talking about prison tech. It was just cool to have clear electronics, stuff you could see the circuit boards. This is an AM, FM radio powered off of batteries. It's extremely basic. Everybody noted how vacant that circuit board was. <laughs> There's just not much on it. I do like how the plastic dial selector kind of rolls back on the knob. I think that's cool. Headphone jack. It, it had great reception. Uh, is this AM FM? I think this is, yeah, it is AM FM. Sometimes I can be looking right at something and not see anything. Analog volume. Great little unit. Very fun. Very reminiscent of something. Do you remember 
if you went to public school in the United States in the 90s and the 80s, they used to do these things where they put you, they'd have these like um, social events where they would get everybody together into the gym or the cafeteria and they would get you to sell magazine subscriptions or wreaths or something. And if you sold enough, you could win radios and telephones and all kinds of weird stuff. This is the kind of, that reminds me of the prizes that you could have with that. All right. This, I believe, was the first radio we reviewed. This is pretty full function. So it's, it says wide frequency receiver, and it really is. It is a TR-105, and this is powered off of a rechargeable battery. As you can see, it's got two slots in there for AAAs, but there's no terminals. So the case is, you know, a, a generic case, I suppose. And there's a little, I don't have the battery in here right now, but this little plug, this into the battery and it's rechargeable. Kind of interesting. Um, shortwave, AM, FM, I think it gets weather, it gets air travel. This had a little bit of limitation in terms of reception, especially on, on some of the uh, shortwave frequencies. And it actually comes with an, ex with an extension, a little alligator clip and a coil of wire so you can stretch it out. So probably not as practical as some of the other radios for what I would be looking to do every single day. But it was functional and it was our first introduction to Redicus. And I could tell right away that the build quality was there. None of this stuff is cheap. None of this stuff feels flimsy. None of this stuff makes you question yourself for buying it. Okay, two more to go. This is probably the weirdest thing. Uh, these are over the ear headphone radios or a headphone radio. So it, these were, you know, kind of popular in the 80s and 90s as well. I remember my dad always had these things. He had a Casio one. And it's a he set of headphones with a built-in FM radio. And it's also got a jack so you can, you know, use it as regular headphones as well. It's got the antenna on there. And I think it takes double A's or triple A's. Let's see here. So, yeah, double A's it looks like. Worked great. The reception was amazing. The sound was very impressive, surprisingly, because they do feel kind of light. But yeah, another great product, a very interesting product. I haven't really used it since the review. But if I was jogging and wanted to hit up some FM radio without lugging around my 500 pound iPhone, I would probably think about that. Last but not least is the biggest one. I've zoomed out here a little bit. This is a very, very interesting unit. This is the TR604 AM FM radio. There's no bells or, wh bells or whistles on this thing. It is an AM FM radio. That's all it does. There's no SD card, no Bluetooth. It doesn't do anything extra, but what it does, it does very, very well. This thing is very highly rated on Amazon. Actually, all of these things are highly rated, but this is built like an absolute tank. It is made out of ABS, but it is good, thick ABS, battery operated, as you can see there, and you know runs off of AC power. If you wanna do that, it comes with a nice, sturdy AC power cord. And again, it's an AM FM radio. A lot of filming today, guys, so you can see the light is changing as we film and the sun goes down, so my apologies there. All right, I'm gonna do my top three because I don't think there's a point in doing the rest and this is already becoming a lot longer of a show than I intended. So coming in at number three on my list is going to be this guy right here. I love the size, I love the features that it has, just a little bit too loud, a little bit too loud. Number two, I'm gonna put this new one here in the number two position. I think that is a fantastic, fantastic radio. I wish the screen would turn off. I wish it would show the track names, but besides that, it's A number one. And speaking of A number one, I've gotta go with this. The V115 is still my favorite just by a hair. These are very, very close. Very close, first and second place. And then this one I would say is nearly tied with this and this because in third place I would say these are sort of in it. Let's call this a tie for third place. So those are my top favorites. And the Walkmans don't really fall into the same category as the other radios, so I'm not going to rank them. They, between the two, I prefer the white one to this. And kind of rounding out the, the bottom of the list is gonna be this guy. The menu system is very quirky and it's hard to operate. And even having had it for several months now, I'm still not good at it. This one just doesn't really have the features that I would like for it to have. And this is a great radio, but I don't listen to radio in this way very often. So I, it's really unfair for me to rank this. So this is not ranked. This has got an immunity idol 
it's gonna stay over there. Same with this, there's nothing wrong with those whatsoever. I just don't use them as much based on what I do with these products. So anyway, there you go guys. All of the cool radios, at least all the ones I could find, from Radicus that we've reviewed ranked. Okay guys, and that is going to do it. I hope you enjoyed this show as much as I enjoyed putting it together for you. I always look forward to the time, the valuable minutes we spend together. And I wanna say thank you for making time to watch this and all of our over 800 videos. We've got something for everybody, man. There is something to watch. Keep you very busy if you're interested in doing so. So definitely check out the channel. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Give us a thumbs up, all that good stuff. But most importantly, God bless. Take care of one another. And we'll be back with another show in just a couple of days. Happy record, honey. We'll see you next time.